I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. You've painted the back of your tank black, you've got sand in it, now it's time to put rock in your tank. And to kick off this episode, let's get started with a pro tip. Don't use fake coral or plastic plants in your saltwater tank. Why? Because those things are actually more of a headache for you in the long run. That fake coral and those plastic plants, you have to scrub them down, which means more maintenance for you and they can lose their color over time and look downright ugly. And the big reason I don't want you to use fake coral or plastic plants in your saltwater tank is that they don't provide one of the most viable things that rock does for your saltwater tank, which is to provide lots of places for beneficial bacteria to live in your tank. Take a look at this rock. There's all kinds of holes in it. The surface area on this rock is a lot. There's lots of places for beneficial bacteria to grow. That beneficial bacteria makes your saltwater tank safe for your fish and help your tank thrive in the long run. So avoid those fake corals, avoid those plastic plants. You're in the educated crowd. That's why you're watching this video series. You wanna use rock. Rock's main role in a saltwater tank is to provide a home for beneficial bacteria called nitrifying bacteria. We'll discuss nitrifying bacteria more in a future episode. For now, know that nitrifying bacteria processes fish waste to make it non-toxic to fish. Besides providing a home for nitrifying bacteria, rock also provides a place for your fish to hide and to feel safe. Pro tip, the more places your saltwater fish have to hide, the less they actually will. We'll discuss that more in the aquascaping part of this video. Before we get there, we have to understand the different types of rock. Rock for your saltwater tank comes in two flavors, live rock and dry rock. Now, don't be mistaken, live rock isn't alive in the sense that it's a living, breathing organism. It's called live rock because of the bacteria and the other stuff that's alive on the surface of the rock. Live rock comes from the ocean or from other saltwater tanks. Pro tip, live rock can contain pests that you don't want in your tank. These pests are called hitchhikers. Hitchhiker examples include aptasia anemones, mantis shrimp, and bad types of algae and fish diseases. I don't recommend you start your tank with live rock. And don't let anyone tell you your tank won't be successful because you didn't start it with live rock. All of these highly successful tanks that I built for clients were started with dry rock, not live rock. Dry rock is just that, it's rock that's dry. There are a couple different types of dry rock and here's a rundown on each. Some companies sell live rock that is nothing more than dried out live rock from the ocean. While the shapes of this rock may be tempting, don't use this rock as it can cause issues in your tank, such as nuisance algae. Here's a shot of some of that dried out live rock in a tank. See all that wispy green hair algae? Not cool and you don't want that junk popping up in your tank. Avoid dried out live rock. Also avoid holy rock, driftwood, and river rock. These are things for freshwater tanks, which isn't you. Here are the types of dry rock you want to focus on. Mine rock, also known as saver rock. This rock is dug out of the ground, which is white in color and mostly all the same shape. It's the cheapest of the dry rock types and gives you the least variety for aquascaping. There's also man-made rock. This rock is made by man and sometimes cured in the ocean. Even though it's cured in the ocean, it dries out before it gets in your tank, so you don't have to worry about pests hitchhiking on this type of rock. Man-made rock can be colored to make it look aged and comes in various shapes and sizes. All of my clients were started with man-made rock, so again, don't let anyone tell you your tank won't be successful if you start it with man-made rock. Breaking down the man-made rock types further, there is base rock, shelf rock, and branch rock. Base rock is usually larger and denser and given the variety of man-made rock, it's not needed for your tank. Shelf rock is flatter pieces that are used to make shelves in your aquascape. Branch rock is made to mimic branching rock found in the wild and adds a nice variety to your aquascaping if you've got the budget for it. Since this is a budget tank series, I put saver rock in the budget tank. And I promised you good, better, best scenarios, so I've built two other tanks, both of which are replicas of the budget tank. And each of these tanks has a different type of rock. The middle of the road tank has Caribsi Life Rock, which is colored to look like aged live rock. It's denser than a saver rock, more expensive, and comes in pre-made shapes if you like that look. The top of the line budget tank has Real Reef Rock in it. This rock is also colored to look like aged dry rock, and its coloring is the closest mimic to aged live rock. It comes in a variety of sizes and shapes to give you lots of variety for your aquascaping. I use Real Reef Rock on all my builds and it works great. Note that if you're going to use Saver Rock for your tank, it will color up in time. It just takes a couple of months. I've used the term aquascaping a lot in this video, so what's aquascaping and why does it matter? 
Aquascaping refers to the design of the layout of the rocks in your saltwater tank. And a good aquascape has lots of caves and crevices for your fish to hide. Remember what I told you at the start of this video. The more places that your fish have to hide, the less they actually will. And these caves and crevices also provide a way for water to move through and around the rocks, which helps prevent the buildup of dirt in your tank called detritus. Therefore, a good aquascape has lots of caves to benefit your fish and lots of caves and crevices to benefit the tank. The first step in aquascaping your tank? You've already done it. Put the sand down first. By putting the sand down first, you provide a cushion between the rock and the glass in the bottom of the tank. Plus, it helps support your aquascape. Next, examine the rocks that came with your tank. Look for natural curves, indentations, and places where the rock will naturally fit together like a joint in your body would. Then, don't overthink it and get to aquascaping. Put a couple rocks in your tank and see what you get. Your taste in aquascaping is going to be different than mine, and here's my thought process on aquascaping the budget tank. This scape is okay as it has caves for the fish to hide and plenty of open spaces for water flow, but it's so typical. I see this aquascape look a lot when people use saber rock. Let's make it look better. Hmm, moving some things around? That's better, but not it. No real caves or places for fish to hide. What about this? No way, not enough rock in the tank. Putting this piece at an angle adds a different angle to the aquascaping and is visually interesting, but it's not what I want for aquascaping on this tank. Adding in this single piece of rock helps, but it's so predictable. You expect this big piece to sit like that. Let's move it a little to the left to add a peak in our aquascaping and to create this dramatic canyon in the center of the tank. Overall, for no more rock than we have and not big of a tank that we have, I'm happy with how this turned out. We've got some variation here. We've got a nice overhang. We've got room in the back for the fish to swim around. And we've got a little cave here over on this side for them to swim through. Here are some pro tips to help you with your aquascaping. Leave room along the back of the tank for fish to swim. Don't be afraid if your rock is touching the glass. That's not gonna break the glass in the tank. Do you need smaller pieces or different sized rock? Work out some anger and smash some rock on the ground. You'll be surprised what you get. There you have it. That's what you need to know about rock for your saltwater tank. In the next episode, we're gonna get this puppy wet. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.